Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel Kalanadi. This week I am back once again with another BookTube SFF Awards Babbles topic. And this week's topic is actually one that I suggested and it is favorite SFF debut novels. I discovered I have far more titles to recommend for this topic than I thought I was going to, so in lieu of giving summaries of each book and this being a very long video, I am just going to read you the first sentence of each book because I've done that before and it's really interesting to do. I'm going to also put these in three categories. I have a fantasy, science fiction, and then an honorable mention category where I'll just give you some more titles. So with that, onwards to my favorite fantasy debut novels. The first one I want to mention is His Majesty's Dragon by Naomi Novik, which is the first book in the Temeraire series. I think this one is easy enough to think of as Dragon Riders of Pern meets the Napoleonic Wars. And the first sentence of His Majesty's Dragon is, The deck of the French ship was slippery with blood, heaving in the choppy sea. A stroke might as easily bring down the man making it as the intended target. Next, I have to mention Amber Lowe by Laura Elena Donnelly. This is set in a secondary world. I would call it fantasy because of that, though I don't think there's actually any magic in it so far. And the series seems to be about the rise of a fascist state and the people who oppose that rise of fascism. So the first sentence of Amber Lowe is, at the beginning of the work week, most of Amberlo's salary folk crawled reluctantly from their bed, or someone else's, and let the trolleys tow them, hung over and half asleep, to the office. Then there is A Stranger in a Laundria by Sophia Samatar, which somehow makes it onto every recommended list or favorites list that I make, but for very good reason. It is a debut novel that just stunned me with the polished and beautiful nature of the prose. The writing is lyrical, which is very fitting considering much of this book is about the power of language and, and reading and stories. There's also a ghost story in here and so many other elements. But the first sentence is, As I was a stranger in Olandria, I knew nothing of the splendor of its coasts, nor of Bane, the harbor city, whose lights and colors spill into the ocean like a cataract of roses. For my final fantasy debut novel pick, I have to go all the way back to the beginning of N.K. Jemisin's career and tell you about The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, which is the first book in the Inheritance trilogy. And yes, this bind-up is really massive and really heavy. <laughs> Um, I do admit that maybe The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms is a bit of a controversial choice because I feel like it's a book that people either absolutely love or really hate because of the romance subplot, and I can see why. But at the time that I read it, I was so, so into it for all the things, and it is what got me started on reading everything by N.K. Jemisin. And this one has a very short first sentence, which is, I am not as I once was. Now moving on to science fiction, for which I have a much longer list as you might expect, but I'll start out with a debut novel that kind of straddles between genres, and that is The Steers Woman by Rosemary Kirstein. I think this book was published all the way back in the 1980s, and when you first start reading it, it seems like it's a fantasy world. I mean, dragons are mentioned, but this very clearly is a science fictional world that just appears to be fantasy, um, and things appear to be magical to people because because they've forgotten where they came from and the technology that makes things work. And that itself is the story. It is um, a very learned, educated woman whose role is to spread knowledge, keep knowledge alive, um, discovering the roots of their world and how magic is actually technology. The first sentence of this one, I have to say, isn't quite as exciting as I remembered it being, and that is, the steers woman centered her chart on the table and anchored the corners around. I would say that this is much more exciting than what that first sentence might imply. Next is Ammonite by Nicola Griffith, which I'm so glad that I can mention here. I was afraid it might not actually be her debut novel. I was relieved when I found out it was. 
Um, this is sort of in the vein of classic feminist science fiction that imagines a world where men can't exist so a uh, female-dominated society can emerge. It's about a woman who goes to a quarantined planet where a virus kills all the men and some of the women as well, and she goes down to the surface and is testing a new vaccine against the virus. And this world and the women-dominated society changes her. This is another one where I feel like the first sentence isn't that exciting, but definitely marks this as science fiction. Marge's suit was still open at neck and wrist, and the helmet rested in the crook of her left arm. China Mountain Zhang by Maureen F. McHugh might be one of my favorite debut novels of all time. I was stunned to find out that this was um, the author's first novel when I finished reading it. I just, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> if everybody could write a first novel like this, that would be amazing. But this book is just so deceptively simple at first. The structure of it, the, the mosaic novel or um, tapestry novel structure was perfect and handled so well. This book had an effortless feel about it, even though it's actually telling a quite complex and deep story. It never feels like anything's being forced in it. And the science fictional world building, the slightly futuristic world, is implied so well without feeling once again like it's forced or it's info dumping on you. The first sentence of this is, the foreman chatters in Mehua, the beautiful tongue, Singapore English. Then there is a matka by Karen Tidbeck. This is what I would call a very atmospheric science fiction novel. It is slow but steady and very subtle, almost dreary in the world building and the feel of the story, and it completely captured me. This was originally published in Swedish in 2012, and the author's English translation came out in 2017. This is also another one where I feel like the first line of this really implies that it's science fiction, that it's genre fiction, and there are conventions that it's calling upon. I feel like this is a sentence that a non-genre reader would read and just not get it at all, but if you are a sci-fi reader, you pick up on the clues, all the stuff packed into this one sentence. Brillar's Vanya Esra II, information assistant with the Esra hygiene specialists, was the only passenger on the auto train bound for a matka. The Quantum Thief by Hano Rayanyemi. I don't know how to describe this science fiction novel. I would call it hard quantum physics science fiction, and it's the type of story where nothing is explained to you. There are no definitions given. You have to figure it out for yourself as you read. And that makes for a difficult read, but incredibly rewarding if that is your type of thing. I love including this on lists of books where I'm going to read the first sentence because this is one of my favorite first sentences of all time. As always, before the war mind and I shoot each other, I try to make small talk. In the same vein as The Quantum Thief is Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. This is another story where nothing is explained to the reader. You have to figure out the world building on your own. You have to decide for yourself whether some things are technological and science fictional or magic. I happen to come down on the side of things that says that much of this is probably based on really complicated theoretical mathematics but it could still have a little bit of fantasy in it as well. This story is about war, a really nasty war where the body count is very high, and the first sentence really sets that up. At Kell Academy, an instructor had explained to Cheris's class that the threshold winnower was a weapon of last resort and not just for its notorious connotations. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, which is probably the only book on this list of debut novels that actually made me really happy while I was reading it. Um, a lot of the others, while so good and such good achievements, were definitely serious or depressing or tragic or otherwise difficult and about subjects like war. Um, this book just made me happy. It is full of hope in so many different ways, and it was such a great launch for Becky Chambers' career. This has a very short first line, which is, as she woke up in the pod, she remembered three things. There's no way I could make a list of favorite science fiction debut novels and not talk about Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie. I just reread the first sentence of this and I'm reminded all over again that this book or this series starts out in some pretty 
dark and bleak ways. This begins with, the body lay naked and face down, a deathly gray spatters of blood staining the snow around it. I did not know if I was going to enjoy this book very much until I got past the first couple of chapters and then I could not put it down. And now I have three quick honorable mentions to tell you about. These aren't favorite debut novels. For various reasons, all three of these didn't get perfect five-star ratings from me, but I just felt like I couldn't make this video and not mention them because they are books that were really impressive when I read them and very memorable. Even as time has gone on, I think about them quite a bit. The first one is Two Like the Lightning by Ada Palmer, the first book in her Terra Ignota series. And this book and the entire series I just find really memorable, really noteworthy because the world building, the concept and the premise of the story is just fantastic, weird, and incredibly unique in the science fiction genre. Then there is God's War by Cameron Hurley, which I have to say immediately is not I think one of her best books. Um, there are definitely some problems with the plot, the storytelling, the writing in this one, but at the time that I read it, it completely knocked me out of my comfort zone and I ended up really appreciating it for that, for pushing me, and for the diverse elements in it that I really needed to be exposed to. And my last honorable mention is The Girl on the Road by Monica Byrne, which did go on to win the James Tiptree Jr. Award, which is for depictions of gender and sexuality in SFF. I do think I've done a review of this book way back in the day, but the video quality is terrible. I might not even link it. I remember there was something awfully wrong with the color correction of like the software I was using on that day, so it was very bizarre looking. Um, but I actually really enjoyed reviewing this book. It was very powerful when I read it, very complex but concise. I felt like the writing in it was just like spearing me at times. So I would really recommend it. I wish I could remember a bit more of the plot today. And that concludes this very long list of my favorite SFF debut novels. I'm really glad that I finally talked about this topic because I think it is so interesting. It was really cool to go back through my list of favorite books of all time and figure out which ones were debut novels. Sometimes an author's first novel doesn't really go anywhere, and sometimes it is a massive hit and just a sign of the great things to come, and you, you just never know. <laughs> So definitely share your thoughts in the comments down below if you have any uh, favorite debut novels that you want people to know about. Um, check out the thread for this topic on the Goodreads group to see what other people are saying. I'll make sure to leave links in the description down below. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back in a little while to talk to you again. And until then, bye.